Good evening and welcome to the COVID-19 update on Channel's television. I'm Millicent Mwoka. Here are some of the highlights this hour. Lagos government dismisses the appropriateness and use of rapid diagnostic test kits in determining COVID-19 status, says it is illegal. Kogi state government lifts lockdown ban for Kababunu local government area, insists again that the state is COVID-19 free. And United Kingdom death toll from coronavirus disease passes the 40,000 mark. Total confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria stands at 11,516 after the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, announced 350 new infections in 19 states and the Federal Capital Territory yesterday. Total persons discharged is 3,535 patients and 323 deaths have been recorded. That leaves the number of active cases in the country at 7,658. Following over 70,000 tests carried out across the country, here's a breakdown by region showing uh, Lagos with the number of confirmed cases, the highest in Nigeria and the southwest at 5,542, followed by Kano in the northwest with cases at 980. The FCT in the North Central region is third in the country with 792 cases. Bornu still maintains the highest tally, 322 in the Northeast. Edo leads in the South South with 351 cases, while Eboni leads in the Southeast with 80 cases. Nigeria's President Muhammadu Buhari, for the first time in weeks, attended the Friday prayers at the Asarok Mosque. The Villa Mosque had been closed due to the restrictions imposed as a result of the coronavirus pandemic about 12 weeks ago. In line with the Presidential Task Force guidelines on COVID-19, close aides of the President and officers in the Villa on grade level 14 and above who participated in the prayer can be seen strictly observing physical distancing, wearing their face masks and other safety measures. <laughs> The senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Mr. Garbusho, who spoke to journalists, says the president is leading by example. You know, the president as, as a citizen himself, but beyond that, as a leader of the people. He has a duty to show the Nigerian public the way to observe the prescribed protocols as they exist in the FCT. And I think this is what the president had done, going through the check, who is going into the mosque, you know, and then they sanitize their own hands and then they keep social distance, you know, inside. So all of it is to show Nigerians this is the way and that is the responsibility of leadership by observing prescriptions as indicated from state to state. Because without this, the war against coronavirus cannot be defeated. Otherwise, all of the gains that have been made will be reversed. So I think this is an essential lesson President Buhari has indicated and uh, should be observed by Nigerians. The governor of Kogi State, North Central Nigeria, has lifted a lockdown which was imposed on Kaba Bunu local government area less than a week ago. After all, the samples taken from contact of the index cases and random tests on the people returned negative. Governor Yahya Bello, who made the announcement today, also insists that the state remains COVID-19 free. He further appealed to citizens to adhere to the protocols of the World Health Organization and the National Center for Disease Control to stay safe. The state government had on Monday ordered the lockdown of Kababunu local government area where the suspected cases were residing. 
And Lagos State Government has warned vendors and users of rapid test kits to resist from doing so because majority of the results from the process are inaccurate. The Commissioner for Health, Professor Akia Bayami in Lagos State, at a press conference in the Laosa today, explains that the rapid diagnostic tests give false results and the consequences of such is grave. He adds that NAVDAC has not validated any vendor or product of the rapid diagnostic test kits and that anyone that is using such is breaking the law. These rapid diagnostic tests are fast. You should get the result widespread testing and get results very quickly. The problem is these tests, majority of them are extremely inaccurate. You can be positive and the test will tell you you're negative. Or you can be negative and the test will tell you you're positive. Now, can you imagine the consequences of this kind of false results? So, for example, if you're positive and the test says you're negative, you will go back home with the confidence that you do not have COVID and you will spread the virus to people, maybe even your grandmother in the house who is vulnerable and your grandmother will get sick and she may get extremely unwell. So that's one side of it. If you are in fact negative and the test says you are positive, then they will now put you in an isolation center. You didn't have COVID before, but by the time you get into that isolation center, that's where you will catch the COVID. So we're well aware that there are rapid diagnostic tests available on the market in Lagos. They have not been validated by the Lagos State Ministry of Health. And as a, as a result, so by law, you cannot use a product that has not been registered by NAFTAC. And if you are using this product either for yourself or you are selling it or you are performing a test for a fee, you are breaking the law. And the respective agencies that are supposed to regulate the law will eventually catch up with you. The Lagos State Government also says it is committed to enforcing and regulating the ease of lockdown directives and keeping everyone safe during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Director General of Lagos State Safety Commission, Mr. Larry Mojola, speaking at a press briefing today, explains that the Safety Commission has received about 1,000 applications on its online register to open portal from uh, various business owners. He also says the online register uh, to open application put in place by the state government for various event centers, which includes gyms, nightclubs, restaurants, cinemas, cafes, among others, is very important before opening, and that when the process is completed, owners of such business will be issued a safety compliance certificate by the agency free of charge. So let's dissect some of the efforts uh, states indeed are putting in place. And perhaps the global community joining us via Skype is Dr. Lufemi Oyekon. He's a family physician at the Basil Don University Hospital, Essex in the United Kingdom. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you for making me part of the conversation. All right, great. Let's get first your thoughts on the relaxation in the United Kingdom, especially how it's affecting the pandemic fight. We understand that some scientists are raising concerns that there's been too much easing too soon. What do you think? Yeah, um, it's true that um, there have been some strong observations from the frontline and scientists about um, easing off of the lockdown. But in general, what you uh, agree with me is the fact that um, UK on its own have developed an antigen testing kit that is very sensitive for the virus as opposed to um, the uh, fake trending one that the Minister of Health, uh, Commissioner of Health in Lagos is complaining about. Right now, we also have um, the antibody testing kits that was developed by both Cambridge and Harvard, um, uh, Cambridge and Oxford University that is 100% sensitive. And um, that has helped a lot because now it's now mandatory for all health workers to test and see if in the 
past three months they've been exposed to the virus in a way if you have the antibodies it gives you some kind of confidence that it is very likely that even if the virus comes in, in close or near future you, you are not going to be hit hardly so but these are some of the innovations that are on ground that is making it look like um, the government can start um, seeing um, light at the end of the tunnel and can start easing the lockdown gradually and um, uh, uh, even though scientists are afraid that there could be a possible spike because people are so happy coming out um, because the lockdown has been on for a while. But uh, in, in a way, there is a balance in science considering how the lockdown has been gradually eased off. Well, Dr. Yeko, you know, looking at the milestones in the United Kingdom and, you know, you mentioned the situation with the Lagos state, the position of the PTF as well and the NCDC on rapid diagnostic test kits. Uh, there's also some health care workers who feel that um, with Nigeria's population, we're not testing as much as we should. And it's in more testing that you're getting more numbers. And so if we're still making use of uh, the method that we have, time is of the essence. So shouldn't we adopt uh, perhaps some of this rapid test kit? I'll say that I don't see... Um, sometimes it's better not to do anything than to do nonsense, to be honest with you. So uh, adopting um, rapid test kits uh, but might be very, very dangerous and disastrous. So, but I, I think the, the other method that Nigeria has used effectively is the, is the lockdown. That, that has helped Africa a lot because, like I said, um, if you look at the way Africa have enforced the lockdown, not allowing flight from diaspora to come to African shores, um, ensuring that this is not something that um, I, I, I support, but using military, using police, using every law enforcement to ensure that the lockdown is enforced, in a way, it has helped Africa a lot because when you look at the reverse, do we have the health facility to cope with, this, with a, 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 an outbreak? No. So that's why you see that um, even when some of these so-called presidents, ministers are ill, because they know the truth. They know the truth. The next day they are off to abroad, to UK, to um, US, because they know that Nigeria doesn't have the health facility to cater for their health. So it, it, it's facts like this that you look at and say that, if the president or maybe any other person around the presidency is ill, they don't stay in the country because they know that we don't have the health facility um, to cater for their health. So you, you, you now begin to look at the fact that can, can we now trust this health facility at the point where there is crisis? The truth is, you know, the truth, the truth is no, you can't. Because at times of, if, if you now say that you should allow the outbreak to continue, and pretend as if we can cope with it, we can. So I will say that there the, 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 the should be gradual easing off of the lockdown, pending what solutions we have available. Now, what are the solutions that Nigerians can, can, can depend on credibly? We can depend on the face mask. That's very easily available. If you look at what the governor of um, Cross River is doing, ensuring that anybody that can make dress, can any tailor, start producing face masks. In a way, that will help Africa. If you see the way, um, what's the name of this other gentleman in Kaduna, is enforcing the lockdown. Same way, if you look at River State, there are quite a few credible people that have taken up, that have taken up lead, mantle of leadership in Nigeria. And there are, are people you could possibly be looking up to as people you can emulate in terms of this, this, this disaster. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can produce credible hand sanitizer. Now, there, there is a lot of alcohol production in Nigeria. Those are other things we can depend on. But if okay. you say that you want, you, you want to say you want to allow the outbreak to continue and allow our health facilities to handle it, that's a total zero. All right. Many things we can depend on. We'd like to thank you, Dr. Olufemi Eko, family physician at Basil Don University Hospital, Essex, the United Kingdom. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you. We have more on the COVID-19 response when we return.
and across the state as several measures to curbing the spread of COVID-19. We're beginning in Kano, where health authorities will soon commence a house-to-house -house sample collection within the state's local government areas where confirmed cases of COVID-19 are concentrated. The emergency exercise will take place in Torani, uh, Nasarawa, Dala, Fage, Ungogo, Kumbutsu and Kano Municipal. The governor, Abdullah Ganduje, at a press briefing also confirmed that markets will be reopened to improve business activities in the state with a relaxation of lockdown now from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays. And the internally displaced people of Bakassi and Cross River State have received palliatives to mitigate the effect of the COVID-19 lockdown. This material support is coming from Senator Florence Itagewa, who said the move is to help reduce the effect of the lockdown. Uh, she's saying that uh, their only means of commerce and trade among uh, people are through the water and that has been restricted. She further calls on the federal government to create a lasting solution to the Bakassi situation. And it's still all about keeping the numbers down as states reopen gradually. Dr. Agatha Wapmuk is a public health physician and she joins us here in Lagos. Glad you could join us. Thank you for having me. All right. First, I'd like to get your um, thought on, you know, our stance on using the rapid test diagnostic uh, test kits. You heard the doctor in the UK who says that um, it's the right thing. But there's also the fear or more like um, apprehension as to we're not testing as much as we should compared, compared with our population. Okay. So in, a, in as much as we want to ramp up testing capacity, to increase early identification, isolation and treat, treatment, and also to track contacts of those cases. That is our desire, but we need to do it well in the right way. We would, in, in, <clears throat> the rejection of those test, test kits by the federal government means that those test kits did not pass the validation tests and the reliability tests. Those tests should be able to give us true positives and true negatives. So we need tests that will give us accurate results because there are implications for giving false results. If we miss positive tests, we're going to have increased community transmission and it would imply that we have increased mortality and mo uh, morbidity and mortality due to COVID-19. Let's perhaps also talk about um, what the Lagos State Commissioner for Health said, that isolation beds are under threat and the projection is if we continue to get uh, over 200 to 300 cases every day, uh, that in two to three weeks we really might be out of beds. And so the home-based care comes in. But the question really is, are we seeing um, this projection as a result of um, the poor state of our health capacity or more like it's really COVID-19, the disease outbreak that's causing uh, this? Okay, I would say both, both ways. Knowing that Lagos is the epicenter of the infection in Nigeria, we have over 5,000 cases in Lagos. And there is competing com com competition for health resources in terms of human and material resources. A lot has been diverted for COVID-19 treatment because of the high number of cases, its high rate of infectivity, associated mortality and morbidity. So with increasing numbers of, um, of cases, Right now, over 11,000 in the country and over 5,000 in Lagos State, there is a tendency that we're going to run out of bed spaces. And it would affect the management of other, other endemic diseases that are supposed to also benefit from those resources. But in terms of managing the cases, are you optimistic that home-based care um, can effectively curb the spread? Because we're also witnessing the silent spreaders in communities. Yeah. The success of this home-based care depends on a lot of behavioral change by those concerned. There needs to be more education, community engagement, and the, the community needs to take responsibility for, treating, for, for this treatment to succeed. They need to abide by self-isolation guidelines. And in order to do this, they need, we need to put a monitoring system in place that will ensure that those on home treatment or self-isolation will abide by isolation guidelines so we don't have increased spread because we don't abide by self-isolation guidelines we're going to have more tr community transmission and invariably increase morbidity and mortality due to COVID-19. What are your 
What's your take on some persons who are still disputing their results, people who still fear um, COVID-19? And, you know, there are still some people today who feel that such a thing doesn't exist. Yes, a lot of people don't feel that um, COVID-19 exists because th that's why we have poor compliance to the public health measures that have been put in place, like um, regular hand washing, use of face masks. At, I was in the bank yesterday and I realized that a lot of people in the bank were not using the face masks. They believe that the figures are being cooked up by the government. And they allowed them into the bank. Yes. I had to bring the attention of the manager yesterday. There are a lot of people not using masks, so they don't believe it. They believe that figures are being cooked up by the government, and they said they have not seen people that are infected. They've not seen anybody die of COVID-19. They said the pictures of the isolation centers are, are usually shown to them, are usually empty. They don't have bed, beds, so therefore, they are not properly informed. So this is where risk communication and community engagement plays a huge role. There has to be sustained risk communication to the communities, sustained community engagement, use of opinion, opinion leaders in the community to get to these people. Different, in, different forms of communication should be used, both the mass media, print media, social media, and then the, you, you use community leaders like religious leaders, traditional leaders, the heads of mechanics, the year lodgers, they need to be engaged regularly. There has to be a sustained commun risk communication and community engagement to ensure that they believe to, and know that this is what we are up against. All right, and know indeed ways that they can protect themselves. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much, Dr. Agatha Wapberg, a public health physician. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you. Now, the number of people who have died in the UK after testing positive for coronavirus has passed 40,000. Only the US, with more than 108,000 uh, deaths, has recorded a greater loss of life in the pandemic so far. Doctors have said the new rules on wearing face coverings and public transport should be extended to all indoor spaces where social distancing is not possible. Let's bring you the global report on COVID-19. against the coronavirus pandemic is not over until there is no virus anywhere in the world. As countries around the world ease lockdown restrictions, the UN agency says some countries have seen upticks in cases and populations must continue to protect themselves. Indonesia's capital, Jakarta, has opened its mosques and other places of worship for the first time in three months. Those attending mosques are required to bring their own prayer mats and abide by social distancing rules with temperature checks at the door. Indonesia has been the hardest hit country in East Asia outside China from the pandemic and Jakarta has been the epicenter of the outbreak with 7,766 cases and 523 deaths. In Latin America, Brazil's death toll has now surpassed Italy's to be the third highest in the world at over 34,000. The figure comes behind the U.S. and the U.K. Spain says it will begin opening up to foreign tourists from July the 1st. The clarification comes after the country's tourism minister initially said that restrictions on land borders will be lifted from June the 22nd. Meanwhile, the EU Commissioner for Home Affairs has called on states in the bloc to reopen their internal borders by the end of this month. Finally, in England, the government says face coverings will be handed out for free at a selection of tube and bus stations from Monday following the announcement they will become compulsory on public transport. And from the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, there is no cure yet for COVID-19, but supportive management of cases involve management of symptoms, managing pre-existing conditions, ensuring patients are well-nourished and hydrated. It's a long list. You can find the latest guide on their website as the center continues to work closely with states. The World Health Organization has the latest updates as well on the global response to the COVID-19 strategy. Their website guides the public health response at all levels. Our website, channelstv.com, has more updates. You can find the latest on the pandemic in Nigeria, across the world, plus other stories.
Thank you for watching. That's the COVID-19 update at this time. I'm Melissa Tomoka. We have another update at 9 p.m. Have a great weekend.